Hey guys, how's it going? This is Alex here, and uh, I'm, I'm showing you a project that I made in 2016 at the start of the year, but I really haven't gotten around to shooting a video about because it's, it's such a weird project. I, I, I'm going to try to explain it, but it's, it's really kind of strange. Um, I made this in Python using Pygame, and um, the whole purpose of it, uh, well, it's, it's kind of a useless project to me uh, in the sense that usually I do robotics projects and I'm trying to learn something new. This was purely based on a childhood idea that I had that always stuck with me, but I never had the technical ability to follow through. So let me explain what's going on on the screen right now. So you see uh, the mouse placing green and black blocks. So the green blocks are plants, and they drop little black circles when I activate them that are food, right? The black blocks are walls. Uh, so the little creatures you're gonna see cannot walk through the walls. Anyways. My inspiration was to make a game um, all based around evolution, but not the evolution of the body or the shape of creatures, but the evolution of the programming of the creatures. So I designed a game where each creature uh, starts off completely random. You can see me placing thousands, well, hundreds of them right now, and I just activated the uh, energy of the plants. So I'm placing them, and they are all randomized, right? So initially a lot of them are going to die because they can't mate, they don't know how to eat, they are badly programmed. Maybe they, whenever they see a plant they go to sleep. Maybe whenever there is a predator nearby they go to it. You know, not smart. But some of them will be have the basic idea of eating and mating. So let's focus on the mating part. Um, it's important that a creature mates because if it doesn't it will no longer pass on its lineage, right? So um, when two creatures mate, they pass on half of their health to the child. If they don't have enough health to do that within a th certain threshold, they are unable to mate. So some of the programming needs to uh, start to learn that over time. Um, the amount of energy in the system is always uh, constant in the sense that uh, the only way energy enters the system is through plants, and the way energy leaves the system is through creatures burning it off by moving around uh, eating and other actions that all have an energy cost associated to them. Once a creature uh, reaches a certain age, they start bleeding energy uh, from old age, so it's less and less likely that they will survive forever and ever, but it, it still is possible. Um, and their programming, right, so how does it work? Good question. Basically each frame, each critter goes through um, a series of genes, which um, have a, a certain priority. So a gene consists of a test, an action, uh, and a value. So a test would be uh, how far is the nearest predator from me? The value would be, th or the threshold would be say 50 units, and the action might be get food. So um, that would be the first gene. So if the nearest predator is less than 50 units, then go get food or if the nearest predator is greater than 50 units, then go get food. Um, uh, the action, the test, the, the, the threshold, the like greater than, less than symbol, and the action are all random parts of the gene. So when one critter mates with another critter, um, they can pass on different aspects of that, like, that gene. So uh, if the parent and the, the, if the mother and the father uh, mate, they might randomize their first genes or, uh, or it might pick over the father's gene, over the mother's gene, uh, completely randomly. And sometimes there is a mutation where a completely different action from neither of the parents is added, and that's random. Uh, when mother and father uh, mate, the color of the, um, the child, the resultant critter, is a mix of the two times, like, you know, plus a certain randomness. So you'll start getting color. Uh, and this is important because you can start to see colonies form of like different colors and you know that they all have similar uh, genetic programming, so to speak. Right, so with that in mind, let's take a look at the UI real quick. I had to pause it to get a, a good picture here. So basically, uh, you can click on any of the critters and see all the stats about them, right? Uh, so for this one, you know, you can see it's a purple one. It's rather large, so that means it's going to move a little bit slower. Currently, it's not hungry because it just ate. It's not too tired, but it will have to sleep soon. When a critter sleeps, it's completely defenseless. So it's important that their programming move them somewhere far away from predators when they are about to go to sleep. Um, aptitude means if it's a scavenger or predator, and that's something that's defined by their actions. So if they tend to attack a lot of people, then they are a predator. 
often to eat a lot of things and that's a scavenger. And so they can tell the aptitude of other critters around them and act accordingly. Um, you might ask, well, it's got three kills and zero foods. Well, I take, I, I call them a predator if they have at least five kills uh, more than they have food and this one's very young. Uh, it's mated zero times. Um, it is uh, the 592nd generation of its family. And um, basically, yeah, there's just a couple more stats there um, about which family it is, its current speed, whatever. Uh, the interesting thing is right there at the bottom, uh, it's gene number three. So that means that it's currently running its third gene. So the first and second test value pairs failed, and so it's executing the third one. Since its sleepiness is less than 92 units, then it's attacking the nearest foreigner. Foreigner meaning not part of its family. Right, okay, so let's just watch a, um, a quick uh, time lapse of this so you can see the evolution over time. So you can see right now uh, to the left, uh, there's uh, you know, some greens towards the middle, there's purples towards the right, there's greens again. Uh, and you can see over time as these like populations um, get cut down on energy, as they die out and they come back. And as I change the landscape, you'll see also like the color change a lot. So really what this means is uh, the families are different and the code for all of them are different as they go along. So one fun thing to do here is what I like to call bottlenecking, uh, where basically you, you um, you give uh, the max energy on screen to be 100,000. Uh, you let them go at it for a couple hours and then you cut it to something very low, like 10,000. So only the very resourceful critters survive and then you pump it back up to 100,000 and they mate like crazy. Um, so a little bit about the tools in this uh, UI. Uh, there's a couple tools where you can see the like uh, critters who have exceeded at something or another. For, so for example, you could see a critter who has eaten the most food. You could see a critter who has uh, killed the most um, other critters. You could see the critter that has mated the most often. So of those three, the, um, oh, you could also see the critter that's uh, oldest, right? The one that survived the longest. So of those uh, four, uh, the most difficult thing to do is to mate often because every time you mate, you give half of your health. I mean, it's really, it's not an easy thing to do. And the only reason critters on screen ever do it is because if they hadn't, they wouldn't exist, right? So only the critters that mate uh, actually continue on. My uh, my personal record for uh, longest living, uh, sorry, the highest mating critter is uh, 47. It mated 47 times before it finally died. Um, and the longest, uh, the oldest critter to have ever lived survived for something like 20,000 frames, which really doesn't mean anything. But um, when you, let me put it into perspective, uh, at 2,000 frames, it starts, uh, the, the game starts penalizing for every frame how much health that that critter has so uh the older it gets the like more health it loses every single frame so surviving for that long means that it was extremely resourceful um, and you can see here i'm putting the critters through a, a drought so to speak so i lowered the max energy on screen to 20,000, and then i'll uh, pump it right back up and see what's up so other features that this game supports are um i hesitate to call it a game but i hope someone plays this other features that it supports is like saving critters, and so it saves the, the critter brain into a JSON file, which you can then load up and copy paste critters however much you want to uh, push the genetics in one way or another. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, really kind of weird uh, thought experiment slash project that I threw together in the course of uh, a month or two. And the code is completely online, and uh, you'll find that there is a a pre-built version executable. You don't need to download Python or anything. It should just run on any Windows machine if you want to play around with it. And I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, I might eventually come back and work on this, but considering it took me so many years to actually get around to doing it, uh, odds are I won't because I have other things to do. But I hope someone enjoys this. And if there's any interest, I'll, um, I'll continue working on it to some extent. I hope you all have a great day. Take it easy.